Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Hey, Mom, are you basting, or do you want me to come in the kitchen? I'm basting, Claudia. You just go on setting the table, please. All right, I just wanted to be sure. Oh, listen, what time is it? Quarter of seven. Wonderful. David will be home any minute now. What time do you want dinner? Well, we certainly won't be able to sit down before eight o'clock, or half past, maybe, even. There's some chores David has to do before dinner. Poor David, let me see. Has to bring in the wood and feed the cow. I don't know how fond he's going to be of that news when you break it to him. Oh, well, I'm not fond of breaking it to him. It couldn't be helped. I just had to let Fritz and Bertha go home for Thanksgiving. Of course. Oh, the dinner table looks very nice. Listen, that place there is for Roger. I I put him on your left, Mama. The more I know Roger Killian, the more I like him. Yep, he wears well. David's awfully lucky to be his partner. Well, let's go in the living room. We're all through. I think Roger's quite lucky David happened to be an architect, so he could be his partner. As a matter of fact, we're all lucky that we am who we am. That's about it. (laughs) Hand me my glasses, Claudia. They're on the mantel. Hey, Mommy, you're not going to start knitting now. Why not? No reason. Except you're going to have to get up in a minute and baste again. Say, how do you like being a cook once more? I don't mind. It's very nice. It's just like old times before Fritz and Bertha came. You did all the work. I watched. Let me see. Pearl, too. Nip, too. Gosh, you should have seen Fritz and Bertha's face when I took them to the train this afternoon. They were just radiant. It was a very nice thing to do, to give them a few days off over Thanksgiving. It wasn't nice, Mama. It was the only thing to do. Besides, it wasn't my idea. Whose was it, pray? It was the look on Bertha's face when she was talking to her daughter. I didn't mean to eavesdrop, Mama. Oh, no. But I, I, I could just tell that Lisa was... Begging Bertha to come home. It seems the baby is sick or something. I don't know. In spite of Julia and Hartley and Roger coming for Thanksgiving, I, I, I just had to let him go. Oh, Mom, I know it won't be easy on David to have to do all the chores, but I I couldn't help it. Well, we'll all manage. Of course we will. Oh, dear old Fritz and Bertha. They wouldn't hear of leaving till I threatened to fire them. <laughs> They're a wonderful couple. <laughs> we are certainly blessed. It's a funny thing, Mom, as much as I love Fritz and Bertha. Something nice about being just us again. I certainly don't mind. Mm, and I hope David won't mind too much. Well, he's always saying he likes working on the place, so this is his big chance, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it, Mama? Of course, it's one thing when that's all you have to do. It's quite another thing when you have to squeeze it in, going to and coming from the oh, office. don't rub it in, Mama. I was only trying to console myself for being so weak-minded. Well, with a sick baby, Lisa really needs Bertha more than we did, doesn't she? I, I, well, I had stop to. Stop consoling yourself. David will understand, I hope. And, and what's more, Mom, if Julie and Hartley don't like the service here, they can just go home where they have a whole pile of servants. And Well, I know it's not half as pleasant. Conceited. No, it's just that fundamentally I think most people have simple tastes. And they certainly make a terrible mistake when they let life complicate them. You're quite the little philosopher tonight. I'm just building up my courage, Mama. I don't blame you. You're lucky you married a sweet man. Oh, he is sweet. Much as he won't admit it. That's why I hate it when things take advantage of him so. Oh, well. Now, Mama, concentrate. How are we going to organize tomorrow? There are going to be an awful lot of things to do, getting dinner for six. Hello, hello. Well, the warriors have come home. Did you bring home the caribou, oh, warriors? I brought home Roger instead. <laughs> oh, that's even better. <laughs> I don't know. He's not very tender. I'm very tough. Mrs. Brown, Mrs. Norton, good evening. Good evening, Mr. Killian. Welcome, Roger. Welcome to the beautiful land of Eastbrook, where the natives go about their duties and chores with a smile on their face and a song in their heart. Oh, my, aren't we in a fancy mood tonight? Hello, darling. Mrs. Brown? Mr. Norton. Oh, his cheek's cold. Mm, nice. Hello, wife. Hello, husband. My, it's good to be here. It is really chilly out. Surprisingly. I'm not going to put my nose out that door again until, well, until judgment day. <laughs> we'll light a fire. David? Excellent idea. Uh, say, Mama, do, do oh, you... Oh, now that I'm in this chair, I shall never get up again. What a day we have. Just one of those days where everything seemed to happen at once. Mm. Oh, it's good to be home. <clears throat> For once, I am not going to budge. If we have to eat dinner, it shall have to be brought in to me. Uh, David, darling, b- before you sit down... Uh, too late, I'm sitting down. Oh, so you are. My pipe... 
party. A match? Please, pass me the ashtray, and we're settled. Right there. Mm, comfort. Mm. Mama, where are you going? To the kitchen for a moment. Mama, don't leave me. I'll be back in a little while. Fine, Mother, you turned out to be. What about our fire, David? Oh, yes, fire. I am so comfortable in this deep chair. Is any wood in the bin, Claudia? Uh, no, darling. I, I looked in this afternoon, and <laughs> we're all out of wood. Well, I guess I'd better go up to the barn. David, you said you weren't going to butt. Don't show me up, please. Right, you are, please. This is my night for laziness, too. Mm, that's what you think. We'll have Fritz go up to the barn and bring down the wood just this once. Hmm? Uh, y you really feel like having a fire? Absolutely. Thank I've you. come all the way up here to Eastbrook, and I shall have a fire in the house. You shall have it, all right. Call Fritz, darling, would you? Well, David, uh, you see, Fritz I'm is... I'm lazy, I admit it. Oh, it was really cold out. The house is nice and snug, darling. When's dinner? A little while. There are just a. There are a few things you have uh, to do. Well, Roger, here. aren't you glad you came up tonight? I most certainly am. A whole evening with nothing to do but sit by the fire and dream. Mm -hmm. Does a man good once in a while. Come over here, darling. Well, I just have to go in the kitchen. Dave. Nonsense. You're getting to Bertha's hair running in and out of the kitchen. Well, Bertha isn't. I know. Just... She's very patient, doesn't say much, but most cooks like to be left alone. Oh, what a wonderfully ordered household, David. Mm, you don't hear me complaining. Yes, this is for me. When I think of how every night after I finish the office, I wander home to a cold apartment, I feel terribly sorry for myself. Especially when I get a taste of the Norton way of life. <laughs> well, don't be jealous too soon, Roger. Now, David, this listen. is what a man should come home to, David. Just this. No more, no less. The city responsibilities, everything far behind you. Nothing left but an easy chair by the fire, pipe to smoke, and a wife to talk of love to. Oh, don't wake me. Just let <laughs> me go on dreaming. <laughs> well, you're not dreaming. Pinch yourself. This is true. No wonder tomorrow is Thanksgiving. Come over here, darling. I, uh, I offer you my lap. Well, that's very generous of you, David, but... Uh, Claudia! Be right back, David. If the waters rose and threatened to flood, if the wind howled and would blow us away, or rain or fire, I would not budge. Oh, fire, say that's right. We haven't got our fire yet, have we? We have all evening. No hurry. You know what? Actually, I feel a little guilty. Why? Well, Fritz has a lot of work to do around the place. Maybe I should... No, go. David. You must do nothing except sit here and let the world fall on its ear if it will. You lead me into paths of evil, <laughs> but I do not resist. You know, Roger, it's strange. What? Just today was one of those days when I couldn't wait to get home. Say, by the way, you haven't seen Her Majesty yet. Mm. Oh, but not tonight, not tonight. It's too raw out. Tomorrow is time enough to see the cow. You know, Roger, we're very lucky to have someone like Fritz. Don't even say it, or the charm will break and he'll disappear. If I didn't have somebody I could trust, so I'd have to be doing a lot of the work on this place myself. Oh, you'd never be able to. I used to think I could. Of course, that was in the summer. The summer you come home, and still light out, but in the winter, no, no. I wouldn't be able to run this place myself. It's, no. It's dark and it's chilly and it's night out and I don't intend to move. And now you are talking sense. Where Claudia is. Oh, she'll be here in a Claudia! Morning. Coming, David. Hello, it's the baby. He's fine. I'm back. Good. Come on now. Now, now sit down here with us. Claudia, can you come into the kitchen a moment? I need you. Yes, Mama, right away. Say, what's going on here tonight? You and Mama are electric with activity. Maybe it's only because that way, because of our lethargy, David. David, it's because... <laughs> well, you see... I hope my presence hasn't meant a lot more work for Fritz and Bertha. They seem to have their hands full as it is. Of course not, Roger. Well, it... good. Now then, how about that fire? Oh, it's fire. I'll, I'll call Fritz. David, sit down. Why? Because there's something I have to tell you, and I haven't had the chance. What is it? Now, David, now, please sit down and listen very calmly to what I have to tell you. And, and, and don't get angry. Well, why should I get angry? Well, because you just might, and... Well, I don't think you're the type who'll get angry, but you just might. Something is going on here, David. I know it. Mm. Something has went on here. It's not going on anymore. <laughs> I, I tried to tell now, you, Claudia, but... Now, I, I promise not to shout. I promise not to get angry. Now, please tell me, what's this all about? In words of one syllable... 
They're gone. Who's gone? What I mean is, darling, that... Well, you... You can't spend the evening sitting here by the fire not budging, and, and you... You can't call Fritz to bring the wood from the barn, and nobody's going to feed the cow except you. Now, wait a minute. And, David, listen, I, I know it's cold and chilly out, but... Well, I'm sorry, but I couldn't help myself, and I'm I know more. it's not fair to you. Now, look, the wood and the cow, and it's cold out. I'm, I'm trying to piece everything together now. Claudia, it cannot be as complicated as it sounds. Don't you understand? Fritz and Bertha are gone. Gone? Gone where? Back to Maryland. Is something the matter? Did... Somebody died? No, nobody died. It's Thanksgiving, that's all, and, and their grandchild was sick. It's all beginning to make sense, David. Darling, I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but, well, I heard Bertha saying she couldn't leave here because of the dinner tomorrow, and then I got weak-minded when I put two and two together about their grandchild and Thanksgiving, so so you have to feed the cow and get the wood and, and I drink... I see. David, I don't blame you if you get angry and shout. You're the lamb I sacrificed, so... Oh, David, say something. Don't shout, but say something, anything. (laughs) Have you gone out of your mind? Are you crazy? What are you laughing at? (laughs) Roger, make him stop. (laughs) And and that's what you were afraid to tell me? I I should never have let things go. It's such an awful imposition on you, David. I would have taken you over my knee and wailed the living daylights out of you if you'd have done anything else. You, 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 You would have? I most certainly would have. Now I know you're crazy. Well, maybe I am, but then... So are you. Oh, darling, I love you so. Claudia, I am crazy too. Because now I think there's nothing I'd rather do this very minute than chop wood and feed Her Majesty the cow. (laughs) 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 All right, then. Then come along. Right. Come on, put on your coat. Wait till I get it. And we're off to the barn. Wait for me, you two. Hey, hey, wait for me. Here's a surefire recipe for a nice, friendly party. Take the cozy crackle of blazing logs and the sparkle of ice-cold Coca-Cola. Mix them together with a room full of congenial guests. And if you have Coke and pokes, maybe you don't even need that log fire. Better get Coke and plenty of it next time you're at the grocer's or drugstore or gas station. Then your chief hospitality ingredient will be on hand. How about coming up to the barn with us, Mr. King? Yes, in just a moment, I'd love to. We'll need all the hands we can get. I'm not much of a professional with cows. Well, David knows what he's doing. Uh, He'll manage it fine, even without Fritz. There aren't many young women who would have done what Claudia did today. I'll say there aren't. Or young men who'd take it with the grace David did. Quite an education, those two. Thanksgiving is a good day to share with them. And we'll all be here tomorrow just for that. How many around the table? Well, there'll be uh, Julia and Hartley... uh, Claudia and David, you and Mrs. Brown, old Jared Tucker, and young master Bobby Norton. Quite a party. Yes, and it's one time when many cooks don't spoil the turkey. Now, after these few words, we'll go up to the barn. Good. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying... Au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.